Magandang araw, April and Marcos po, ang inyong Pretty Ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapagkusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also our fresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryong ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our Depth Ed EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, Depth Ed Tayo, and Depth Ed Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Elaine Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Good afternoon to all of our learners who are currently watching right now. Ako po si Tutor Mark, ang makakasama ninyo for English 5. At kayo ay aking gagabayan sa pagsagot ng mga pagsasanay o exercises na makikita sa inyong self-learning module. Ang ating pong ginagamit ngayon ng module ay galing po mismo sa Bureau of Learning Resources sa Central Office. At yung module po na ito ay naka-upload din po sa ating DepEd Commons. So, to all of all your learners who are currently watching, please make sure na hawak na ninyo ang inyong ball pen at ang inyong papel dahil gagabayan ko na kayo sa pagsagot at para maintindihan ninyo ang ating week 2 lesson for English 5. So, ready na tayo? Okay, so we are now... In our week two session, at tayo ay may paksa all about summarizing information from various text types. Last week, we have studied already about the different text types. At dahil dyan, kinakailangan ay maunawaan natin ngayon in terms of summarizing it. Mamaya, malalaman ninyo ang tamang proseso on how we are going to summarize the materials o yung mga text na ating makikita at mababasa. As I mentioned earlier, we used the self-learning module na galing po sa Bureau of Learning Resources at yan po ay madadownload ninyo sa ating DepEd Commons. Just go to commons.deped.gov.ph and we are now at the week 2 session for third quarter at makikita nyo po ang presentation na aking ginamit na pwede nyo rin pong i-download para magamit ninyo sa pag-review. So, at the end of our tutorial session, you will be able to learn these two things. First, is to define what a summary is. And number two, summarize information from various text types. At lahat ng yan ay matutunan natin sa module 2, quarter 3 session for summarizing information from various text types. Kaya, kung kayo ay handa na, hit like or heart. 
So let's have first a review. Last week, we have identified the different text types. We have the time order text, the explanation text, the factual recount, the cause and effect text, and the enumeration text. Maglalagay ako dito ng mga tanong at tignan natin kung kaya nung tukuyin kung anong klase ito ng text type. Number one, this text type presents ideas by listing or enumerating the kinds, characteristics, and classes. Online, what do you think is the answer for our first question? Anong klase kaya ito ng text type? If your answer is letter E, enumeration text, then you are correct. Dahil kapag ito ay inilista o makikita natin yung context niya na nagbibigay siya ng iba't ibang klase ng examples, then that is a kind of an enumeration text. Let's move on. Number two, these are texts developed through a logical or chronological order following a sequence. Ano kaya sa tingin ninyo yung tawag naman natin sa ganitong klase ng text type? Look at this term. Sabi dito ay, it is arranged in a chronological order following a sequence. If your answer is letter A, time order text, then you are correct. Kagaya nga nang sinabi ko last week, kagaya ito nung pag-prepare natin ng ating lulutuin, yung procedures o steps na kinakilangan ay may sinusundan siyang pattern o sequence. We move on to question number three. It is a factual text that explains how or why something happens. What do you think is the answer for number three? If your answer is letter B, an explanation text, then you are correct. Sabi nga natin, itong klase ng explanation text ay nagbibigay ng information or facts na ipinapaliwanag ang isang scenario o ang isang event. Okay? So I hope naalala nyo pa yon. Now, we move on to number four. It is a historical report that tells us an event which have already happened in time order. Huwag kayong malilito kapag nakita niyo yung word na time order kasi ang sinabi rito ay may kadugtong siyang historical report. Therefore, what do you think is the answer for number four? If you choose letter C, factual recount, then you are correct. Dahil nakabase lamang ito kung ano yung facts o yung historical report na nangyari. Even na meron siyang na-mention na time order. Okay? So, our answer for number four is letter C. So, for Noel Amigo na nanonood ngayon, you are correct. And we move on to the last item for our review. Number five, this text explains reasons and results of the phenomena or happenings, situations, and trends. If your answer for this item is letter D, cause and effect text, then you are correct. Sinasabi nito yung mga pangyayari, kung bakit siya nangyayari, kagaya na bakit tayo merong water pollution, bakit tayo merong land pollution, at kung meron itong explanation doon na ibinibahagi niya yung different sets of examples, then it is giving us a phenomena or a happening. Kaya ito ay isang cause and effect text. So I hope sa ating ginawang review for numbers 1 to 5 ay naaalala pa ninyo ang ating pinag-aralan last week. Now, for this week, kinakailangan ay maintindihan natin kung ano ba ang paksa ng summarizing. So, let's focus on to this thing. I'll have here some text na galing po sa module. So if you are using that module, makikita nyo po itong text na ito or story. This is our story letter A. Meaning, kinakailangan ay maintindihan natin ang context nito. At mamaya ay tatanungin ko kayo kung ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito. So allow me to read the story. One Saturday morning, Tipoy woke up late and was told by his mother to go to the grocery to buy some goodies. On his way to the grocery store, he met his friend Eman who is playing a mobile game. Hey Tipoy, where are you going? Asked Eman. I'm going to Kikin store to buy breads and drinks. Tipoy answered. Look, my mother bought me a new cell phone. 
Evan proudly shows his new cell phone to him. The boy was so amazed at the new gadget of his friend. He tried the mobile game and enjoyed playing it. After a couple of minutes, he realized that his mother was waiting for him. He hurriedly went to the grocery store and got the goodies he needs to buy. When he was about to pay the bills, he checked his pocket and found it empty. He realized that he had lost the money and felt scared at the moment. He thought of losing the money while playing the mobile game with his friend Eman. He ran as fast as he could to the area where they played mobile games. He asked his friend if he saw the money he was looking for. Eman told him he never saw it. He advised him instead to go home and tell his mother the truth. The boy went home empty-handed. He went to his mother with tears and told her what had happened. His mother smiled at him calmly and said, Next time, you need to have the presence of mind. You went to the grocery store without asking for money from me. The boy sighed and felt relieved. He had his mother with a smile on his face. With this story, ano ang inyong napansin? It's long, isn't it? And even if it is long, we can easily identify the information if we comprehend it very well. In this story, we knew that the boy was asked to buy something. But nung kanyang nakita ang kanyang friend na si Eman at ipinakita nito ang kanyang bagong cellphone, medyo na-distract siya dahil Napakita rito ang isang mobile game at naengganyo siya. At nang kanyang naalala na siya pala ay inutusan ng kanyang nanay, ay nagpunta siya kaagad sa grocery store para bilhin kung ano ang dapat na ibilhin. However, when he touched his pocket, walang lamang pera at natakot siya na baka daw ay nahulog niya ang pera. Siya ay bumalik sa kanyang kaibigan at nagtanong baka nakita nito ang kanyang pera. But his friend Eman said, wala daw. So he went back home at nagsasorry siya sa kanyang nanay. At ang nanay niya ay biglang napangiti dahil sinabi nito na next time you need to have a presence of mind kasi inutusan nga kitang bumili pero hindi mo sa akin kinuha yung pera. In short, hindi na wala yung pera, wala lang talagang dalang pera si Tipoy during that time. And when we have this kind of story, we need to, number one, read it very well. Remember it, my dear learners, read it very well. Number two, learn how to comprehend the information. At kapag nakomprehend natin at kung anong ibig sabihin ng storya, then we can summarize it. Look at this next text. It is almost the same with letter A. This is letter B. Look at this text and I'll read it for you. Tipoy was instructed by his mother to buy some goodies in the grocery. His attention was caught by his friend Eman who was playing a mobile game and later played with him. In the grocery, he was not able to buy goodies for he thought he had lost the money. It was then he realized that he forgot to ask for money from his mother when he arrived home. Isn't it that the story is the same? Yes, magkapareho ang story. Anong pinagkaiba ng letter A at letter B? Sa letter B, maiksi. Pero ang meaning ay the same. That is what we call as summarizing. Everybody, my dear learners, repeat after me. Summarizing. Ang summarizing ay ginagawa na natin when we talk to our parents, to our friends, to our relatives. Kapag meron tayong napanood at gusto natin ikwento, we make it a point na ginagawa natin itong mas maiksi, but the essence is there. The content is still there. So, let us answer the following questions with this one. Here are the guide questions. Number one. How is text A different from text B? These sets of questions can also be found in your self-learning module. So this is a guide. My dear learners, what is the difference? If your answer is like this, text A is long 
while text B is short, then you are correct. Because text B is the summarized version or the short version of the long text in text A. Yun ang nakita natin sa set na ito. So to all of our viewers who are currently watching, we have here from Baras, Pinugay Elementary School. Hello po kay Ma'am Lorena, Marie, uh, Ma'am Lorena Banalo. Ayan. So, we now have answered the guide question for number one. Let's move on. Number two, how are the two texts the same? Paano nagkapareho yung text A at text B na aking ikinuwento at binasa kanina? If your answer and if you are thinking something like this, it talks about tipoy, then you are correct. It tells us doon sa story kung paano inutusan si tipoy at paano niya paano siya nakipaglaro sa kanyang kaibigan si Eman because of the new cell phone. Therefore, with this text, makikita natin na magkapareho lang talaga siya. But when we read it, it's important for us to comprehend very well so we get the gist, the important context of these stories. So, if you answer this correctly, congratulations. We move on to the third guide question. Do they contain the same main idea and details? Magkapareho daw ba sila ng esensya o meaning na sinasabi? If your answer is yes, then you are correct. That's how we need to work on to these different text types. Basahin na mabuti, unawain, for us to comprehend it and have our attention. Kapag nagkaroon tayo ng retention, maikukwento natin at mabibigay natin ang buo dito ng mas maayos. So, let's try it with the different activities that we have. So, if you answer this one correctly, then very good. So, for Arianne May Zacarias, congratulations, you got the correct answer. Let's move on. Remember this, my dear learners. When we summarize, it is a powerful reading and writing strategy. It increases our comprehension and retention of information. Sa pamamagitan ng pagsasummarize ng isang mahabang kwento, natututunan natin kunin yung importanteng bagay o information, kaya madali natin itong nakukwento. When you summarize, you retain the most important information in a text, by using your own words. You heard it right. You need to use your own words so that when you summarize, madali mo i-explain kasi ikaw mismo naintindihan mo at nagkaroon ng retention sa iyo ang iyong binabasa. It requires tedious practice. It requires constant reading. At kapag yan ay inyong na-master, yan ay makakatulong sa inyo if you move forward in any kind of reading text. At makakatulong yan, we move further doon sa upper grades. Okay? So, these are the different ideas and concepts. You need to get the key ideas. Repeat after me. Key ideas. Get your paper and pen and write it down habang akin itong ipinapaliwanag para mas lubos ninyong maintindihan paano natin gagawin ang summarizing. Number one. Observe the text features. What do we mean by observing the text features? Isn't it that when we read something, there is a title? Sa title pa lang, malalaman natin kung tungkol saan ang isang teksto, ang isang kwento. Therefore, when you observe these features, it's important na pag binasa mo yung isang story, umpisan mo talaga sa title. Dahil kapag inintindi mo kung ano ang title nito, malalaman ninyo kung ano ba ang ideya ng kwentong ito. I hope you are listening attentively. Please write it down in your paper. The first key idea is to get the text feature, what we are looking for. Next is to identify the topic sentence. Tungkol saan ba ang tekstong ito? Tungkol saan ba ang kwento? Earlier we have a story about Tipoy na inutusan ng kanyang nanay to buy something. That is the topic sentence. From there, we have learned also that the story grew wherein he met his friend na si Eman at nakapaglaro siya at nawala na sa isip niya na siya pala ay kinakilang pumunta ng grocery store. Nang ito ay kanyang naalala, nakapanya ang kanyang bulsa, wala pala ang kanyang pera. So with these things, 
na madali sa atin kung paano natin na ipapaliwanag ang mga bagay na ito. So remember, our second key idea is to identify the topic sentence. So to Noel Amigo or who is currently watching, very good. Tama po ang iyong inilagay na sagot. So yung identify na topic sentence natin kanina, it's all about tipoy. Third key idea is to use a graphic organizer. Ano ang graphic organizer? It's just like this na pinapakita ko. When we create a mind map activity, yung nagsastrand out tayo gaya ng ginagawa ko dito, mas mabilis nating naiintindihan kung ano ang flow. The use of a graphic organizer is very helpful for us to understand what is the concept all about and we can arrange bits by bits in a sentence format. Mamaya may halimbawa ako na mas lubos na makakatulong para maintindihan niyo kung paano ang tamang pagsasummarize. Next, after creating a graphic organizer, you need to have the reporter's notes. Ano yung laman ng reporter's notes? Kinakailangan ay kilala mo, who, alam mo kung tungkol saan, what, where, saan nangyari, when, kailan nangyari, why and the how. These questions will help us to determine what is the meaning or what is the idea of a certain story? So, this is the fourth one. Use a reporter's notes. And lastly, take note of the highlighted vocabulary words. There are instances when we read things out, meron tayo mga key terminologies or key terms o yung vocabulary notes na pwede nating magamit dahil ito yung mga difficult words para, para maintindihan natin yung isang concept. Ano ba ang vocabulary words? Usually, when we read something in a textbook o sa isang uh, workbook, yung vocabulary words, yan yung mga explanation or definition of terms doon sa mga difficult words na nasa isang story. It's important for us to read it first so that when we dive down to the story, we know already the meaning of it. So, repeat after me the five key ideas that we need to determine para makatulong sa pag-create ng good summarized version ng isang long text type. Okay? Ready? Number one, observe text features. Number two, identify the topic sentence. Number three, use graphic organizers. Number four, use the reporter's notes answering the questions who, what, where, when, why, and how. And lastly, number five, take note of highlighted words, especially if you do have a vocabulary context or vocabulary words. Nakuha ba ang technique? Kung nakuha, very good. Let's move to different exercises para matukoy natin ang inyong pagkatuto. Exercise number one found in page seven of the soft learning module for English five. Allow me to read the long context. Air pollution may be due to a lot of factors. First, air can be polluted by harmful gases from vehicles, factory gas emissions, and outflow from natural disasters such as volcanic eruption or forest fires. These factors are largely influenced by industrialization and cons consumerism, evident in urbanized towns and cities with zero to minimal government supervision and regulation. Also, people's lack of concern to the environment has paved way for capitalists to overuse our natural resources, such as trees that could have cleaned the air. Lastly, the government's seemingly lack of accountability in terms of reinforcing law that should have protected the air can also be a major factor. While this may suggest hopelessness for a clean air in the future, we still hope for awareness of the need for cleaner air turned into action. This kind of text type is what we call as a cause and effects type. Dito sa text type na ito, makikita natin na nagbigay siya ng ibang ibang examples or reasons kung bakit tayo mayroong air pollution at ano ang ginaging epekto nito. With this one, we need to have first an idea or concept para sagutin ang different guide questions sa pagtukoy para ma-summarize natin ito. So, let's move on. These are the guide questions. What is the paragraph all about? 
Doon sa aking ikinawento o binasa kanina, tungkol saan ang paragraph na ito? If your answer is all about air pollution, then you are correct. Dahil natukoy na natin na ito ay tungkol sa air pollution, yan ang kanyang topic sentence o ang kanyang key idea na aking binanggit kanina. Since we already know the key topic, which is all about air pollution, dyan dapat magre-revolve ang iyong summary. Next, what does the key sentence introduce? Ano ang mga binahagi o sinabi dito? Isn't it that when it is introduced, in-elaborate niya yung iba't ibang dahilan kung bakit tayo merong air pollution? So our answer here, it gives information about the factors that causes air pollution. So I hope you get it right here. Nakukuha ninyo na, ah, ganun pala yung paraan ng pagbubuo ng summary. In summarizing, we need to get the key sentences so that we can create a good sentence or paragraph na mapapabuod natin ito. Now, answering the third guide question, how many causes of air pollution are stated? Ilan ba ang na-state o na-elaborate dun sa ating context? Tingnan natin ha. Una, sinabi niya, kapag meron daw natural disaster o kaya naman ay nagkaroon ng kagagawa ng tao because of industrialization. That's one factor. Pangalawa ay sinabi rito yung kapabayaan ng tao. And lastly, lack of government's accountability. Therefore, ilan ang nabanggit based on this one? There are three. So all of these questions are also the same questions which can be found in your self-learning module. Pwede ninyong kopyahin ang mga sagot na ito na makakatulong sa inyo para maintindihan ang pagbuo ng summary. Look at these guide questions. Now, let's move on in creating a summary out of it by having our graphic organizer. Look, what is the key sentence all about? The key sentence is the first question earlier. What does the paragraph tell us? The paragraph mentioned all about the air pollution. So your answer na pwede ninyong isulat sa inyong self-learning module ay there are a lot of factors why we have air pollution. That is the key sentence in that paragraph. And down to it is your causes. Sabi natin, may tatlong causes nito. And these are the following. Kung naalala ninyong binanggit ko, first, because of the harmful gases influenced by the industrialization and natural disasters such as volcanic eruption or the forest fires. Ang mga ito, ang unang sagot doon sa ating bubuing summary. Kung inyong nakikita, it came from a guide question na pwede nating mabuo sa pamamagitan ng graphic organizer. Remember the five concepts or key ideas na aking binahagi kanina? And this is how it goes. Next, lack of concern to the environment by many people. Yan ang pangalawa nating cause na nabanggit doon sa paragraph. At ito, napaiksi na natin. We are only getting the important concepts. Lastly, lack of accountability in reinforcing the law that protects the air which still located into our original paragraph. Importante mga bata na kapag kayo ay gumawa ng summary at sumasagot kayo ng ganitong klase ng uh, graphic organizer, it is important that we use our own words but we are not deviating to the original context, to the original text. And from here, we boil down to the effect. What is the effect? Some people are hopeless while some are pushing for awareness to have a cleaner air. And that line is found on the last line also of that long paragraph. Kung inyong makikita ngayon, hindi na natin kinakailangan magbasa ng napakahabang text type or text information dahil sa pamamagitan lang ng ating graphic organizer, na-compress na natin siya. So, to all of our viewers who are currently tuned in, like Lance Season Evangelista, Arian Mezarias, and Noel Amigo, who gave their answers, very good. Tama po ang inyong mga naibigay. Mula dito, we can now create our summary. Look at this one.
in exercise number one, page eight, it asks you to complete this. Air pollution is cause blank. These are blank and blank and blank. So if we are going to answer it, galing dun sa ating graphic organizer, ganito ang pwede ninyong ilagay sa inyong self-learning module. Air pollution is caused by many factors. Okay? Air pollution is caused by many factors. So you can put there yung word na by many factors. So kulang ako dito ng word na by. So lagay ko lang muna. I just need to retype it muna. I'll type there the word by many factors. Okay. So after having this one, air pollution is caused by many factors. Nasabi natin doon sa ating graphic organizer kung ano yung tatlong yun. These are the influences of industrialization and natural disasters. That's the first one. Lack of concern by the people and lack of accountability in reinforcing the law. As simple as it is, we already created our summary. Nakuha ba ninyo yun mga bata? Ganon ang format ng pagkikreate ng summary. Kinakailangan ay alam natin kung patungkol saan ito. So, you can have this one and copy it in your page 8 of your self-learning module. Aside from copying, I hope na intindihan ninyo kung paano tayo bumuo ng summary. Bits by bits. If your answer is the same, hit like or heart. Now, we move on. In this concept, it's important for us to put the effect. Doon sa ating self-learning module, kulang siya kasi ng line. If I will be asked, inelaborate niya kung ano ang kanyang topic sentence. The topic sentence is air pollution. Ipinakita niya yung sa graphic organizer yung kanyang cause. But in the summary, you need also to indicate what's the effect. That's why it's important for us to add this line. Some people are hopeless while some are pushing for awareness to have a cleaner air. With this, we have a we have a complete summary, the totality of the given context earlier. Sa mga bata na nanonood ngayon, ito ang pwede nating maging tugon sa question dito sa page 8, letter B. Allow me to read it. Air pollution is caused by many factors. These are the influences of industrialization and natural disasters, lack of concern by the people, and lack of accountability in reinforcing the law. Some people are hopeless while some are pushing for awareness to have a cleaner air. I hope na intindihan nyo na to mga bata. Now, let's move forward. With exercise number two found in page eight, this is an example of an enumeration text. Allow me now to read the context. So Houghton Caves and Natural Bridge Park is a beautiful tourist attraction in Basay, Samar. It is where you can find the most spectacular stalactites and stalagmites that come in varied sizes and shapes. It features a variety of caves, subterranean rivers, waterfalls, rock formation, and a natural stone bridge. Aside from the breathtaking view, tourists can also enjoy different activities in the area, such as swimming with thousands of jellyfish, kayaking at the Sohotan River, spelunking, at Magkukuog Cave, cliff diving at Hagukan Cave, and simply enjoying the beauty of Pag Panhulugan Cave. All these natural adventures you can enjoy at the Sohoton and Natural Bridge Park of Pasay, Samar. Now, my dear learners, when we have read about this text, napakahaba niya. Now, let us answer the guide questions that we have and for us to digest Para ma-summarize natin ito. Now, moving on. We have the same guide questions what we have earlier. What is the paragraph all about? What is it all about? Tungkol saan ito? If your answer is this, it talks about Sohoton Caves and Natural Bridge Park in Basay Samar, then you are correct. That is also the same question which can be found in your self-learning module and this is the answer. You can write it down now, my dear learners. Ang kwento o ang paragraph ay tungkol sa Sohoton case na makikita sa Basay Samar. Ngayon, alam na natin kung tungkol saan yun at dapat dyan magre-revolt ang iyong summary. 
I have mentioned that it is all about an enumeration text because it elaborated the activities. So, dahil alam natin kung ano ang activities, iisa-isahin natin to. Question number two, what things are enumerated to show the different activities to be done in Sohoton case? Napansin niyo? Tumama do sa aking sinasabi. So we need to elaborate, isa-isa, ano ang mga ito. We need to enumerate it. And these are the following. Swimming, kayaking, spelunking, cliff diving, and kung medyo takot kang maglalamoy o sa extreme adventure, then you can appreciate the beauty of nature. These are the different activities that we can have na nabanggit doon sa ating context. Napansin nyo, lumiit na ngayon o umiksi ngayon ang mahabang context with this one. And question number three, what word phrases or signals the enumeration or listing na ating ginamit kanina? Kung inyong babalikan, makikita natin na inilist daw dito yung paggamit ng word na such as. So, with all of these things being said, we can have different interpretation or answers here. Paano po? Pwedeng sa number two ay hindi activities ang iyong inilagay. Pwedeng nakita mo kung ano ang stalagmites at stalactites at yun ang iyong inilagay. Still, you enumerated it. It's still the same concept. But in this activity, ang tanong kasi ay what different activities. So, to all of our learners who are currently watching, these are the possible answers that you can write down in your self-learning module and it's a guide. Since we already have a guide, we move on to our graphic organizer. Look, we are asked about the general subject and what are the types there. So, what is the subject? It's all about the Sohotan case and natural bridge part. It is the same uh, graphic organizer which is used in your self-learning module so you can copy these answers, but while copying it, Please digest and understand the concept. Sabi ko kanina, ang paksa ay tungkol sa sahotan case and natural bridge part na makikita sa summer. Now, there are different types there. Sinabi rito na ano ang types na pwede natin gawin. And if you associate it to the guide question, the first type is associated to the water sports such as swimming and kayaking. Now, I use my own words. Water sports. O, oh, eto. Tignan natin ha sa susunod. Naalala niyo ba yung term na spelunking and cliff diving? Anong klase kaya siya ng activity? If your answer is like this, extreme adventures such as spelunking and cliff diving, then you are correct. You now have the second concept. And lastly, sabi nga natin, you can also appreciate the beauty of nature so you could have this one. Appreciate the beauty of nature by doing sightseeing. I use the word sightseeing. Own words ko na ito. At yun yung aking binabanggit kanina. When you use your own words, make sure that it is always associated to the concept na ibinahagi kanina o sa kwento. Now that we have it, we can now summarize the long context earlier. This is the answer. For page 9, it says there, you need to write down the summary. And this is the possible answer. There are many activities that can be done when you visit the... So sorry, it should be Sohotan Case, not Sohitan. Sohotan Case and Natural Bridge Park in Basay Samar. You can have the water sports such as swimming and kayaking. You can also try the extreme adventures such as belonging and cliff diving. Also, you can appreciate the beauty of nature by doing sightseeing. With this one, nakagawa tayo ng summary mula sa mahabang context kanina. And as you could see, we use guide questions and we could also use a graphic organizer. Let me correct that one that's so hitan, it should be so hotan. Okay, so with all of our learners who are currently watching, I already gave a possible answer for page, for page 9. You can take a screenshot of it or you can download the presentation in the debit comments so you have an idea or concept about it. Now, moving forward, our next exercise. For all of our learners, I'm sorry if I need to have a longer uh, session because we have a lot of activities found in the self-learning module and I will discuss it for you so that you will be able to understand it very well. Now, for exercise number three, found, found in page nine, 
It's entitled The Happiest Day of Manila by Richard Bula. Allow me to read the context. One afternoon, Manila's class advisor gave him an envelope for his parents. He immediately went home and handed the envelope to his mother. Mother Susan opened and read the letter. The letter informed her of Manila's chance to enjoy a scholarship next school year in one of the pre prestigious universities in the country. At last, the fruits of a long and arduous labor since you were young are now being harvested. Now, you are recognized and awarded with this scholarship, his mother announced with joy. Maiksi na yung paragraph na ito and we could see na ito ay tungkol kay Manilo. Sabi nga, yun ang kanyang happiest day. Now, we can still summarize this one in shorter context by answering guide questions and having a guided activity or a graphic organizer. We move on. These guide questions are also seen in your self-learning module and let us answer. What did Manilo's class advisor give him? Ano ang ibinigay kay Manilo? If your answer is an envelope, then you are correct. Yung envelope na yun ay naglalagay, naglalaman ng mahalagang balita na kinakailangan ng ibigay sa kanyang parents. So, we move on. What did Manilo do after receiving the envelope? Anong kanyang ginawa? If your answer is, he immediately went home and gave the envelope to his mother named Susan, then you are correct because that was what happened in our story. At mula dito ay napapaiksi na natin yung long context kanina. Number three, why did Mother Susan feel happy about that day? Ano ang kanyang ikinatuwa? If your answer is like this, she was happy because Manilo can enjoy a scholarship grant and enroll in a prestigious university, then you are correct. Lahat ng ito ay nakuha natin because we comprehend. Inintindi natin yung context o yung story kanina. And with all of these things happen at na-indicate na natin, ay kaya na natin ngayon ma-summarize ito into bits of pieces. Now, moving on. In page 10, exercise number 3, you are asked to create a summary out of it. At kapag sinabi natin summary, dapat mas maiksi siya doon sa ating original context kanina. And this is a possible answer. Listen attentively. Manila's class advisor gave him an envelope for his parents. He immediately went home and gave it to his mother. Susan read the letter. She was very happy because Manilo can enjoy a scholarship grant to study in a prestigious university. That is the gist or the important concept na nabanggit dun sa ating text kanina. And this is the possible answer in our activity. I hope you get it right with our example for exercise number three found in page 10 of your self-learning module. So to all of our learners who are currently watching, we need to move forward with our next exercise, exercise number four, and it's really quite long, found in page 11 of your self-learning module. It says here, every year, the Philippines experiences tropical cyclones or typhoons that resulted in damage to properties and lives. It is of utmost importance that the people should have enough knowledge of what to do before, during, and after the typhoon. Before the typhoon hits your place, watch for weather updates on your television, radio, or internet. Familiarize yourself with the Barangay's evacuation plan. Keep your emergency kit accessible and follow the evacuation order by the community. During the typhoon, stay in your home or evacuation center and keep watch for updates. Turn off the main switch for utilities like water and electricity. Have a flashlight in hand and keep away from possible dangers like glass windows. After the typhoon, wait for the announcement about your area safety. Stay away from dangers such as damaged power lines, fallen trees, and damaged structures. Make sure that there are no wet or submerged appliances or outlets before turning, up, turning on the electricity. Lastly, check the possible breeding places for mosquitoes, such as tires, cans, or pots, and get rid of rainwater. This is a very long context, 
Now, if we are going to summarize this one, we need to get the information that it talks about a key concept. The Philippines is always visited by typhoons or cyclones. Next, elaborate the different sequences before the typhoon, during the typhoon, and after the typhoon. Once you have that, then you can create now your own summary. And this is an example, an answer found or an activity that can be answered on page 11 of your self-learning module. This is an example of an answer onto this question. The Philippines experiences tropical cyclones or typhoons every year. We must know what to do to save our properties and lives. Before a typhoon strikes, listen to weather updates and prepare the emergency kits for evacuation. During a typhoon, turn off electrical switches and keep watch for updates. After the typhoon, wait for the announcements about your area's safety. All in all, you now have summarized a very long context with our content earlier. Hindi ba't ganun lang kadali? So, itong ibinigay ko na example, bumabalik at bumabalik tayo sa concept na get the key concept, the topic sentence, and what are the needed inputs. Kinakailangan ang comprehension at basahin ng mabuti ito para makuha natin ang tamang sagot. So, to our dear learners, you can take a screenshot out of it or you can download the presentation in that ed commons. Moving forward, in the assessment portion of your self-learning module, you need to indicate or complete the paragraph. These are the choices. Own, summarize, retention, complicated, important, comprehension. So, let us try to answer numbers one, two, three, four, and five by building up the concept of this paragraph or onto this paragraph. Let's begin. Summarizing is a powerful reading strategy. It increases, remember the word, comprehension. It increases comprehension and, remember the word, retention of information. Once we have all of these things, when you summarize, you restate the most important information of a text using your own words. So please take note of the following answers in this assessment number one that you could write down in your answer sheet. This is a guide. Remember, summarizing is a strategy. It increases your comprehension and retention of information. You need to use your own words so that you will get the key important information when you summarize things. If you understand it clearly, hit like or heart. Moving on, you will see there in your context another assessment wherein you need to read a story entitled Salud in the Enchanted Forest. And the direction says, you need to write down four to five sentences in creating a summary out of it. You need to write it down in a, in a sheet of paper. So allow me to read the story. Salud in the Enchanted Forest by Richard Gula. One dark night, a voice as cold as the pouring rain woke. Salud up from a deep slumber. The voice that reverberated through the thick woods was calling her. Though she was nervous, she calmed herself and followed the voice that was strange to her. Her feet carried her into a dense forest. Salud was astonished at the sight of fairies parting in the shade of a large tree. She could not believe it. She saw various tools made of gold. The surroundings were also adorned with beautiful pearls and diamonds. The place was surrounded by a variety of flowers. Salud was surprised when someone had suddenly grabbed her shoulder. She was amazed to see a very handsome creature with a charming smile. He gave her a glass of drink and brought her in the front of the crowd. Salud could not believe what was happening. All of a sudden, the fairies danced to the accompaniment of entertaining music. She was surprised when a trumpet had sounded as if it a coronation was about to take place. Unexpectedly, a fairy appeared from nowhere carrying a crown. The fairy happily placed the crown on Salud's head. After the crowning, the crowd shouted, Long live the queen! Long live the queen! 
Salud's happiness was overflowing when suddenly she felt pain on her side. She recognized that someone was pitching her. She opened her eyes widely and saw her mother's face. She then realized that she was just dreaming. When we read about this context, sabi ko kanina sa pagbabasa pa lang ng title, makukuha natin kung tungkol saan ang kwento. It talks about an enchanted forest. At pag sinabi natin enchanted, it's, uh, it, it's magical. At ito ay papasok sa tinatawag natin na fiction format. So, dahil dito, nung atin siyang binasa, kinakilangan when we create our summary, alam natin na doon tayo maglalaro. The first idea is that salud is sleeping. Next is, alam natin na habang binabasa natin to, marami siyang nakita. At siya ay sinabi na nag do sa kwento, nagpa-party daw at parang merong coronation at tinuro na siya bilang prinsesa. Nang siya ay masaya, nabanggit niya na parang nakaramdam siya na may umipis sa kanyang tagiliran. She felt pain at nagising siya dahil yung pala isang panaginip. And when we look onto this concept, yan ay papasok sa isang summary. And this is the possible answer. Salud is sleeping when suddenly realized that she is in a different world. She could not believe that there are numerous fairies celebrating in the forest. Unexpectedly, they crowned her as a queen. She is very happy until she felt pinching her side. Everything is just a dream. So itong ibigay ko na example ay ang summary nito. So if you try to look at it, ganun natin pwedeng gawa ng pagbubuod or summary, yung isang long context. Even if na four to five sentences ito, ay kayang-kaya natin gawin if we have the comprehension and we have the retention of information. So as you could see here, this is our uh, possible answer or sample answer in this activity. Okay? So at the last line, sabi nga, she is very happy until she felt something on her side. Everything is just a dream. Okay? So this is one example of our activity. Next. You will also read there the ace, the story about the ant and the grasshopper. At alam na alam natin yung kwento na ito na kung saan yung grasshopper ay talagang tamad at puro fun lang ang kanyang ginagawa. At yung ant naman ay nagko-collect ng food in preparation for the winter season. At nang dumating ang winter season, yung grasshopper ay walang makain at doon na natutunan ang kanyang lesson. This context is found in your self-learning module at the latter part as an added activity. So in here, you will see a graphic organizer just like this na tatanungin kayo about the story elements. This is one example ng graphic organizer na makakatulong sa inyo para bumuo kayo ng summary. So if we will try to analyze it, the characters are the ant and the grasshopper. The setting, it's a field one summer day. The problem or the conflict, the grasshopper did not bother to prepare for winter. And the solution there, the grasshopper learned his lesson to prepare for the days ahead. And if we try to read about it, ano ang kanyang common theme o ang kanyang binabanggit na konteksto? It's all about the preparedness, ang paghahanda para meron tayong magamit sa panahon ng pangangailangan at yun ang itinuturo rito. And on to the latter portion, you will be asked about the plot. Sabi natin, ang plot ay yung pagkaka-organize ng pagkakasunod-sunod ng isang kwento. And this is, or these are the examples. Number one, the ant is preparing during the summer season. Number two, the grasshopper does not have any food during winter. And number three, the grasshopper, the grasshopper learned his lesson. And with this, Mabubuo natin yung isang summary mula dito sa ating kwento na tungkol sa ant at sa grasshopper. And this is the example. It is summer and the ant is preparing for the coming winter by collecting food. However, the grasshopper is only having fun. When winter comes, the grasshopper does not have anything for food. On the contrary, the ant had or the ant has a lot of food because of being prepared. The grasshopper learned his lesson 
to prepare for the future. And this is one way kung paano din natin mabubuod o gagawa tayo ng summary by identifying the story elements in a certain story or in a certain context. Sa ating ibinahagi ngayon, I hope na intindihan ninyo kung ano ang mga bagay-bagay kung paano natin matukoy yung pag-summary. Remember, number one, comprehend. Number two, have the retention. And number three, Use your own words by getting the important information in the long context. Sa pamamagitan yan, ay makakabuo kayo ng good summary. Summarizing is a strategy. It is a technique. And I hope you practice that with your self-learning module. Again, this is Tutor Mark na makakasama ninyo for English 5. You can download this presentation in depth and commons sa mga magulang na nanonood o mga teachers at lalong-lalo na sa mga bata, you can freely download it in our depth and commons by going to commons.depth.gov.ph. Again, this is Tutor Mark. Maraming maraming salamat sa pakikinig. Bye-bye! Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Itulay Free Online Tutorial Session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine Social Media Accounts. Paalam!